it's hard for me to know <clears throat> without an audience where all of you might come from. But I should share with you that in Cleveland, Ohio, whenever we have a sporting event or a mystery on television, you can hear before the advertisement comes on, you will hear the mellifluous tones of the announcers say something like, when the moment is right, will you be ready? Now, we all know that the artery to the, uh, the penile artery is really quite small compared to the coronary artery. So not infrequently, before somebody comes down with heart disease, they may find that they're no longer able to raise the flag. However, uh, all is not lost, not infrequently, maybe 10 or 11 months after I've counseled somebody, I'll get a phone call. Dr. Esselstyn, yes, this is Mr. So-and-so, all right? Yes, good to hear your voice. Yeah, doc, I really ought to, thought I ought to give you a call because recently something has come up and I'm wondering if I don't owe you another check. Now, I promised you that before, before we wrap this up, that I wanted to be sure that you understood that even the patient's who are more senior where a plaque may be filled with scar and fibrosis and calcification. Uh, can we get a blood back into the rest of the heart muscle? So here is an example of a 58 year old uh, Youngstown, Ohio school bus driver. Now the PET scan on the left, if it is orange or yellow, that indicates there is a good blood supply to the heart muscle. But you can see in this one on the left, where it is green, that is a poor heart muscle perfusion. That's the, the day that I counseled him. And his cholesterol went from 261 in 10 days down to, I guess, 126. Then six weeks later, we repeated his PET scan. It's all back. It's all improved. What's going on here? Here's another. This happened to be a 60 year old downtown Cleveland stockbroker. And on the left, you can see the area that is perfused well with orange and, and yellow. But then there's this patch that is green, poor perfused. I counseled them then. The cholesterol went from 248 to 137 in 10 days. And then at three weeks, we brought them back for a repeat PET scan. Bingo, it's all back. How does that happen? What is going on? I really wanted to know. And so I actually uh, had the uh, <clears throat> opportunity to look at this interesting slide where all the heart muscle is gone. What you're looking at is the heart that is configured by its blood vessels. And you can see the three main arteries, the right coronary artery, the left anterior descending and the circumflex. But those are the arteries, when they're riding on the surface of the heart, they get all the publicity about bypasses and stents, but where do they go? <clears throat> they all dive. They all dive into the heart muscle where they interdigitate and separate and joining others. And you can see there are literally thousands of these intramuscular arteries. It was about this time that I called to Rodriguez, who is the uh, chairman of the cardiovascular pathology section at the Cleveland Clinic, who dissects 200 hearts a year <clears throat> from the deceased. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I asked him, Rod, how often do you ever see any blockages or plaque, any blockages or plaque that are, <clears throat> with, that have blockages? And he said, never. Well, now I think I had the answer. Because when I first see these patients, <clears throat> they've never had the cause of their disease treated. And their, uh, their endothelial cells are so beaten down. They are hardly making any nitric oxide, which you recall <clears throat> is such a powerful blood vessel dilator. And at the same time, <clears throat> Your endothelial cells are now your enemy. They are making two molecules of endothelin and thromboxane, which are vasoconstrictors. Again, that means that all of, and as you look at this slide of the blood vessels in the heart, all of those thousands and thousands of vessels when I first see these patients are crimped. 
they're narrowed by the endothelial and thromboxane. And it's not, now it explains why it is that often within four, six, eight, or 10 days of, of these patients initiating therapy where they're no longer injuring their endothelial cells, they're getting more nitric oxide and they totally stop making the endothelial and thromboxane so that this entire vascular tree is opening up and which is why they it's so exciting for them to realize that what they're doing is effective and is, is working. So let's summarize <clears throat> the eight measures of disease reversal. Coronary angiograms will show reversal. You can see reversal on a stress test. I've done it with the, I showed it with the PET scan. I've talked about the carotid ultrasound reversal and the pulse volume of the thigh and the symptoms of reversal of angina, claudication, and erectile dysfunction. Pretty darn powerful and exciting when patients go to and completely commit themselves to <clears throat> reversing the causation of their disease. Now, <clears throat> the question arises is, uh, uh, is, is there really just heart disease is one illness, but or what, what is it that happens to the rest of the patient's illness when you start treating heart disease? When you start eating whole food plant-based nutrition, our patients who have diabetes, it markedly diminishes, often goes away. Same thing happens with hypertension. Same thing happens to their risk of vascular dementia. Same thing happens with mention of their heart disease, with their Crohn's disease, with ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and, uh, and multiple sclerosis, as well as allergies and asthma. It's almost as if the heavens have opened and presented medicine with one of the strongest items in our toolbox that we've ever had. Now, just to show you from a community standpoint how powerful this can be, on the upper left is that, that, that green line on the graph. This is indicative of why it was that the province of Northern Karelia in Finland in 1972 was the heart attack capital of the world. Uh, a lot of smoking, everything was having clotted cream, heavy diet and meat and milk. And lo and behold, a really enterprising young physician from Helsinki, Pekka Puska, took it upon himself to go to Karelia and dealing with local authorities, community leaders, the patients themselves, tackling the dairy industry and the tobacco industry. Lo and behold, over the next 30 years, the province of Karelia decreased the rate of heart disease by 85%. And at the same time, the rest of Finland caught on a little bit later, but they were reduced their heart disease by 80%. Very provocative and exciting to think what kind of a really uh, uh, a, a community reversal of disease uh, can happen. And at the same time, if you look at this, the, the figure, the second one up from the bottom, at the same time that they were reducing their heart disease, look what happened. Their cancer rate in Karelia was decreased by 67%. Very powerful and quite provocative. Now, this is a slide given to me by a physician friend, David Schumann, simply to show that when this gentleman who has diabetes was convinced to go on the plant-based diet, immediately uh, his blood sugar levels began to plummet into a more acceptable range. And here's another one of his patients. This poor woman was really peeing away her bones because of her diet, because ordinarily your urinary calcium should be in the, it, within the blue band. This poor woman was peeing away her bones, but Dave Schumann got her to change to plant-based nutrition. And within one week, of starting the diet, she was now in the normal range. Pretty exciting. Uh, this happens to be a 
gentleman by the name of Joe Rolino, who was a world famous strongman in the Coney Island area in 1920. And uh, he and his mother, they lived in Brooklyn, were from the old school, plant based. And uh, here he is actually uh, at age 103. And I want to wrap this up. I always like to have you uh, understand where I, this is uh, the A building at the Cleveland Clinic, where on the eighth floor, I worked as a surgeon for many years. But I'd like to show it to you so you can actually see what the trees look like, <laughs> what the trees look like uh, in Cleveland in February. Uh, however, when I retired from surgery, I was, my interest in uh, nutrition, I was hired to work at the uh, Wellness Institute. And although the, 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 budget, the budget is really more uh, modest at the Wellness Institute, uh, the morale is quite high. And I always like to wrap up with this uh, uh, maiden because, well, there's no question that if you've left medical school, brains, brains are important. But nothing, nothing, nothing is as important as persistence, 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 best exemplified by this young damsel in 1939 in Life Magazine trying to learn how to do the splits. And it's tough to do the splits, but she stuck with it and stuck with it and stuck with it. And sure enough, I believe it was uh, uh, Steve Shore who spotted her uh, down near Bayshore uh, in August of last year, and she got it right. <laughs> <laughs>